With us now, the executive wine editor of Food and Wine magazine, Ray Isle. Love these alternative economic indicators. Yeah, that we, it's, you know, it's a nice thing. <laughs> that we do. So tell us what specifically is happening and changing in well, the market for high-end wine. What's really interesting is what's changing is that, you know, for a long, for a while, or post everything, the economy come running in trouble, you saw a lot of growth in the sort of six to ten dollar zone in the wine business. And now what you're seeing is a lot of increased growth in the in the ten to fifteen and particularly the above the twenty dollar zone, which means people are spending, you know, are sort of loosening the you know, the purse strings in some sense. People Always drink, regardless of whether there's a you know, recession or whatever the economy's doing. They're going to drink, but they they adjust the, what they're going to spend based on how the economy is doing. So you're looking at a little more luxury spending, a little more people going out on a limb with that. What are the numbers like? The numbers, are, you know, it, growth in the 10 to 20 segment is about 8.2 percent over you know over the past year. Um, 20 plus segment, 17 um, percent, up 17 percent. Um, you know, 15 percent by value. That's 52 weeks going back from April, which is the most recent um, statistics. But who's buying $20 wine? It is surely not the average American family with uh, average it's, household income of thirty nine thousand. No, it's not. I mean, you know, wine in general, wine kind of probably skews to a higher household income. Um, and you're looking at people. You're looking at baby boomers. That's the, the, still the biggest wine um, consuming, you know, group. Um, and they've got, you know, some disposable income. They've got some. Um, Lust like for wine. Um, you're also looking at millennials are starting to get into wine, which is which has helped a lot. Um, and you know the the biggest category in terms of total volume is still the sort of six buck zone. The top five brands in the in the country are in that zone, and they're all you know all the top five brands are either owned by Gallo or Constellation. Um, you know big big companies, but you're still seeing you know growth. In that, you know, Cupcake, for instance, in the 1399 zone is a huge um, success story. Um, they've done really well over the past few years. Um, and that's kind of an indicator of what's going on with that, I think. How competitive are the cheaper foreign wines relative to the cheaper Californian wines? You know, the cheaper foreign wines are competitive. What, what, what you're really seeing is you're seeing a lot of bulk wine being brought in for California brand based brands. So what you, you get, instead of a bag in a box, you've got a bag in a container. Um, and you ship it in, you know, you ship Malbec in from Argentina in containers, and, and then you bottle it under a brand that's in the U.S., like Cupcake or, or give, you know. So you may think you're buying American wine when, in fact, you're buying you, you, foreign you juice. You may be, maybe if you're buying foreign juice. There's, you know, the bulk wine market for foreign juice is huge and has been growing very, very rapidly because, especially coming from South America, you've got really affordable wine that's actually quite good. Um, much lower production cost, much lower land cost. You know. What's the deal with cider? Why is this becoming very okay, popular? Cider, cider is this huge success story, and it's you know it's 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 still a small category, but the but the growth rate has been great, and part of it is that the beer market is very is pretty flat, sort of stagnant or or dropping a little bit. The big success story in beer has been the craft brew segment, which is about seven percent. Cider is up, you know, it's it's a tiny percentage of the beer market, but. It's um it's been growing you know it increased 62 percent last year which is um and it, and it's going faster and faster and it seems to be aimed you know the appeal seems to be towards women um to some degree uh, towards younger people because it has a little bit of sweetness in the flavor and actually towards the health conscious side because it's gluten free mm -hmm. um, and that's been we've already talked about that trend <laughs> yeah very hot so. right now. Um, and so cider, you know, you're seeing the big guys get into it. Um, you know, uh, Anheuser-Busch InBev has gotten into cider with the Stella Artois Cidre that they just brought out. Um, Miller's gotten into it, and that's all in the past year or two that the big, the big, the huge brewing companies have gotten. A into big cider. money going into cider. Exactly. All right. Well, it's always good to get the inside story with you. Ray Isle is the executive uh, wine editor at Food and Wine Magazine.